The third level has some of these riding platforms. Jump quickly. Be sure not to let yourself hit the walls or you'll get kicked into the spikes and die. Then you'll come across this auto-layering line of blocks. You can follow it and fend off some of the enemies that float by, but I suggest taking the rush jet from the edge up so you can reach these power-ups without having any problems from hitting your head on the ceiling trying to make your way up from underneath. You'll come to another one of these at the home stretch where these guys that drop when leveling up with you will try to halt you long enough to fall into the grate below. Try to give yourself enough of a head start past the tail of the snaky platform and stop yourself so they drop in front of you. The boss is another lookalike of the previous bosses, but this one has a bazooka attachment on his arm that he fires while jumping into the air, and while he's on the ground he'll send three scattered rings that freeze you upon contact. What sucks is that it's not easy to dodge these rings since they don't separate much. They follow you vertically too so you can't always bait it to one side. And once you're frozen, you're not getting unfrozen until he either shoots you or makes contact with you, doing damage either way. You're going to want to stand as far away from him as possible so you have enough room to let the ring separate a bit, giving you a chance to jump between them. Then whip out your gyro attack and fire him while he's either running around or in midair, changing the vertical direction of your attack while he's up there. The fourth level isn't even so much a level. You'll start in this enclosed area with blocks hiding the structure above you. All you have to do is shoot them down and let it come down. Just make sure you slide through the other side so you don't get crushed. After a very short trip, you'll arrive at the gate to meet Proto Man. He plays his whistle, out of tune I might add, and you'll get a cutscene where Proto Man blasts Mega Man to the brink of death. But what's this? Another whistle? Oh shit, another Proto Man! I thought that last whistle sounded off. So he exposes the imposter, gives you an energy refill, and now it's time to battle this bastard. Who of course looks just like the last three guys. He'll fire a few rounds while a shield similar to the boss from earlier will wrap around him and then swing off screen before jumping to the other side and repeating the process. Jump over his attacks and once the shield is let loose, jump over that and slide under him, attacking him when he's on the other side firing at you. The best weapon here to use is Beat. You should be able to take him out in no time flat. After you win, Dr. Wily appears, big surprise, and reveals that he was the one who kidnapped Dr. Light and framed Proto Man with an imposter named Dark Man. So now it's on to the Skull Castle to rescue Dr. Light and put Dr. Wily in his place. Again. The first level starts off with an easy E tank and M tank just waiting for you to pick them up. Then you drop down a semi narrow space with walls covered with spikes. Once you land on this little platform, shift your direction more to the right side to avoid the spikes that shift that way. And because the only safe spot on the floor once you land is on the right. There'll be these spinning wheel platforms over a pit with little spike things that hover around the perimeters of some of them. Try to keep your balance on these things, and make your jumps when there's a clean area to land on. Also take the top route here, it's easier. After that you'll hit a revisit form of a portion of Dustman stage with the trash compactors. This time they come down faster, the trash doesn't stretch out as far, and you can't use one Megabuster shot to clear a whole line of them. Stand back when blowing up the chunks of garbage, if you get too close you'll get crushed. The boss is broken up into three pieces. The head is up top which is what you're aiming for but it's too high, so what you have to do is shoot the bottom pieces which causes it to fire out in your direction. You want to jump onto it or you'll be eating steel spikes, and then shoot the middle one to get up high enough to hit the head. While you're doing this, avoid the little guys it releases that cascade down. Once you get onto the middle platform, change to the crystal eye and shoot the head, then switch back to the mega buster to summon the platforms again. Keep doing this until you kill it. The beginning of the second stage, much like the first, has an E-Tank and M-Tank just sitting there in the open. No effort needed in acquiring them. You'll end up underwater, and here you'll have to be pretty good at timing your jumps because there's spinning wheels you have to jump on, along with some spikes on the ceiling. Plus hard hats. A lot of hard hats. Dr. Wally really loves these hard hats, doesn't he? The rest of the level is pretty basic. You just go around shooting down familiar enemies. Down the stretch you'll meet up with this guardian that'll probably get to you before you can land enough shots in. So a good move here is to hang toward the top of the ladder and let Beat take care of him. And after taking the rush jet up over this large area of spikes, do the same thing here after climbing this ladder. This boss flies around, shooting orange balls at you. To hit it you'll have to shoot through where these little hatches open up. But to reach out to jump onto these platforms and wait until they get level with your target. Fire the gyro attack through the gaps and retreat if you're under attack by the orange balls or if the monstrosity weaves his way in your direction. The third stage is where you'll battle all eight Robot Masters again in rematches. Choose the order of your opponents wisely, using the same weapons you used the last time. Although this time you can use the Star Crash against the Gravity Man. 
One thing that kind of sucks is that they put you right back in the exact same rooms you fought them in the last time. I always liked how you fought them in newly designed lairs in the rematches. Add a little something different to the mix. Anyways, once you beat the eight robots, you'll do battle with Dr. Wily in this room with a small pit of spikes in the middle. He'll hover around in his ship, stop somewhere, come crashing down, and then pop back up, repeating this attack over and over again. You have to hit the upper part of the ship once he lands, and he'll always stop above you. So the best place to stand is right near the pit. This way he'll be in the vicinity of the middle, giving you the option to run back or to quickly jump over the spikes, whichever escape is closer. Either way you'll get time to shoot at the upper half of the ship, which is its only weakness. So charge up your Mega Buster while it's hovering around and fire it after it lands. Once it blows up, Wily escapes and it's on to another level, but that's not much of a swerve because you already knew going into it that there was a skull icon on the map between levels. Whatever, it's the last stage and there's not much to it other than a few enemies. The gate to Dr. Wily shows up right away. He'll take you on from inside the skull tank, firing blue balls and heat seeking missiles while hovering back and forth and trying to suck you in towards it. The super arrow makes mincemeat of the tank, but of course this is only the first form. Wily gets ready in his more compact ship and much like in the fourth game's final battle he'll hide away in the darkness and reappear somewhere random. When he shows up, he'll drop an energy ball to the ground that breaks off into two after hitting the ground, and then he'll scatter a circle of them outward. There are two effective weapons you can use against him here, one of them having beat equipped to follow Wily around when you maneuver your way in between the projectiles. The other weapon of choice is the gyro attack, which you'll fire off once he appears from hiding, and change its direction once it vertically lines up with him. Don't try to get two hits on him, you won't have enough time and you could find yourself out of gyro energy. Hopefully you'll still have an M-Tank if this occurs. Once you drain all his energy, Wily will run off and Mega Man will chase him down until he gets to Dr. Light's cell. Mega Man rescues Light, but the building starts falling apart and Mega Man desperately tries to hang on to the collapsing ceiling while Light and Wily run around for their lives. Wily escapes, Proto Man's whistle plays, a path is cleared for Mega Man and Dr. Light to escape and we see the Skull Castle's demise. Wily taken off in his spaceship and Mega Man and Light watching, with Proto Man in the foreground. The credits roll here, and I must say that story-wise, this was a great idea, but it really would have been better as the story to Mega Man 4. For one thing, they already tried the swerve of a new nemesis in Dr. Cossack the last time, so when we learned that Proto Man was going to be the villain in this game, there was no shock value whatsoever in Dr. Wily being the mastermind. Having Proto Man as the apparent antagonist would have perfectly followed up the mystery of the Mega Man 3 ending, with Wily seemingly dead and Proto Man being the one rescuing Mega Man and then disappearing right after. But oh well, what's done is done. All in all, this was what you'd expect out of a Mega Man game at this point. The formula hasn't changed since day one, which isn't exactly a bad thing because you'll at least know going into it that you're getting a solid game out of the deal. But is the franchise getting a little tiring at this point? Possibly. If you're not a big Mega Man fan, then there's not really a whole lot of reason to play the game other than to kill some time. When you look at this game by itself, it has all the attributes a good game should have. Excellent graphics, great sound, great control, great gameplay. As a game, it's technically sound, but because it's the fifth entry of a big franchise, the expectations are to live up to the standard of its predecessors. And while it's a generally fun game, it doesn't really evolve the Mega Man franchise too much, and the series is starting to wear itself out a little bit. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.